be aware of what you are aware of. Self-realization through storytelling. Be aware. Anything that you are aware of shows up as the circumstances of your life. Shalom, podcast two, open up your vision, be aware. What ingredients are in your bowl? The ingredients in your mixture determines what will be produced or manifested in your life. So what ingredients make up your recipe? And by that I mean what thoughts deeply or secretly dominate your thinking or your mind space? and your feelings most of the time. Is it worry, despair, doubt, jealousy, negativity, blame, self-sabotage, or self-pity? If these are your ingredients, then the circumstances of your life will outpicture unsatisfying predicaments and undesired results. You are probably experiencing a life full of chaos and disappointments. You, we, are the cause in a matter of our circumstances because whatever we fill our waking thoughts with is what we get. We get what we imagine in our hearts and in our minds. Yes, we get what we feel most secretly in our hearts. I'm not talking about wishful thinking and then placing it on a vision board because you wish you had whatever it is you desired. Imagination attached to our feeling is powerful and it rules in our lives. You can say we get what we inscribe in our heart. The image is drawn there. Our imagination begins with our feelings. Here's a biblical story that demonstrates this fact. There once was a prophet named Elijah, E-L-I-S-H-A. Now there was a war during those days between Israel and the Syrians. After waking early and observing the area where they had slept, Elijah's servant felt, imagined, or imaged defeat. He was worried and afraid and saw no way to win the battle because the evidence supported by his five senses showed clearly that they were surrounded and outnumbered by the horses and men of Syria. Strolling around before his master woke up. To the servant, defeat was inevitable. The ingredients, thoughts, feelings in his cup were worry, sabotage, self-pity, and negative faith. He imagined defeat because he felt defeated. And if left up to him, they would have been defeated. How can we win this war with so many of them against us. He cried, there's no way that we can win. Now on the other hand, Elijah imagined, felt, thus thought about victory. The ingredients in his bowl were hope with work, victory, salvation, positive expectation, and positive reliance on God. Elijah was optimistic. He kept his head to the sky, similar to Daniel in the lion's den. Elijah knew the following. We can win as long as we keep our head to the sky. Be optimistic. Both men had faith, one in defeat and the other in victory. 
Elijah trusted God wholeheartedly, and the servant believed in God half-heartedly. The story takes place in 2 Kings 6, 14-17. The conversation is written like this, the servant. O oh Lord, what shall we do? Elijah says, don't be afraid. Those who are with us are more than those who are with them. Elijah asks God, Lord, open this servant's eyes so that he may see. Mm. See what? The glory of God. Then the Lord opened the servant's eyes, and he looked and saw the hills full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. There was a shield around Elisha. His servant's eyes opened and symbolized a change in ingredients, a change in consciousness, looking up instead of looking down and moping not choosing based on the evidence of the five senses only. There have been many times that I judged results based on my five senses, particularly when my baby boy was incarcerated and I felt I couldn't protect him, not with what I've seen in movies and the talks that I've heard, I worried and cried and could only imagine horrible things happening to him behind bars. There were many who tried to comfort me and prayed for me and him. Between their prayers and my cries for God to help me see things differently, I had an epiphany. It was as if a bubble popped. Finally, my feelings changed and I knew in my heart in my feelings, that God would put a shield around him. Oh boy, that gave me peace. He would protect him and send him back to me unharmed. A sudden peace came upon me as I lifted my consciousness. I lifted my head and my countenance and continued my job of creating and taking care of the rest of the five younger children. After two years, he made it home, and 20 years later, he is a changed man, never returning to his old ways. I began practicing and relying on positive faith and trust in God beyond my senses, not just that day, before that and even after that. Does this remind you of any events or situations in your life? When you couldn't see the good in a situation? Have you ever said the following? Oh Lord, how is this going to work? I feel defeated. I give up. There is no hope. Life is not fair. I know they say that you don't give anyone more than they can bear. But Lord, this is too, too hard. Having negative ingredients, self-talk, or negative thoughts supported by negative feelings in your bowl or your mind blocks you from having the life of your dreams. Having positive ingredients, self-talk that is, and rehearsing positive self-talk in your mind and out of your mouth leads to well-desired manifestations. The key is to open up your vision. Open up your vision. Open up your mind, mind, mind. Until next time.